For this conference, we choose to focus on our third priority, increasing SMEs access to markets. More specifically, this conference will focus on remaining obstacles for SMEs to benefit from e-commerce in the single market. The single market provides business opportunities in a market larger than the USA. Still, companies, and especially SMEs, do not tap its full potential. A small business um, does not have to understand 26 <coughs> other legal regimes. We thought it would be a, a, a good idea to offer the potential to, to, to go for a single, an, an alternative regime. So you, you understand one other regime, which represents a vast saving, because we calculate on average in our impact assessment that to get a, a legal advice, to understand another legal regime, costs on average 10,000 euros per legal regime. Now, if you multiply that for 26, that's quite a lot of money. The objective of the Commission was to make this instrument user-friendly so that businesses could use it without having to hire lawyers. But the proposal is actually very complex, and there are lots of cross-references between provisions and, as I said, vague legal terms, which, which um, are potentially um, a dream for, for lawyers and, and, and a nightmare for, for SMEs. Um, we believe it's essential that the right balance between consumer protection and competitiveness of traders is struck. We don't think that's the case at the moment. Um, and we need to introduce a clear hierarchy of remedies, for example. Um, replacement and repair need to be given priority, and there needs to be a smaller number of, of information obligations in, in the proposal. Working for an, an internet technology company, we don't see problems, we see opportunities. So I'm going to pretend I don't see any problems and instead I'm going to zoom in on complexity. Complexity is becoming something of a buzzword. And I want to make sure that its impact goes deeper than that. Because any company linked to the digital economy grapples with complexity. And so any legislation linked to the digital economy needs to take that into account. And in fact, the very policy making process must embrace complexity. It is intended to be an enabling legislation that uh, helps to unlock the potential that uh, is there in the internet, in the internet across Europe. The idea is that uh, it will help to provide trust and uh, confidence in a trustworthy and secure environment and thereby to open the door for more cross-border secure services and for business opportunities. It will also boost the convenience and the trust online and thereby uh, will help to create jobs and growth and uh, make the single market a reality also in the digital space. We all in the EU live together and do business together. It's not possible to set out exactly who bears the cost for that, who's responsible and what happens if there is a claim, who is responsible, none of that is clear. Furthermore, that's the main reason why we only sell a tenth of our products abroad. Although we've seen our sales increase by nine or ten times, well, it's to do with all this and the traders. A company <clears throat> like DPDHL, we operate a European uh, network so that we can provide delivery in uh, all European countries. Uh, and uh, what is the, the special thing with that is that we uh, have uh, different cooperation partners in every uh, country and uh, we select them according to their commercial and uh, quality uh, offers. It has turned out that in many countries this is still the uh, uh, sort of classical postal operator with uh, whom we cooperate, but in uh, some countries these are other, uh, other uh, delivery uh, providers are better. It's a very good option for consumers as well as for businesses to refer their complaints aiming to resolve disputes out of court through arbitration, conciliation and mediation. And I do believe a lot in mediation. If you would know my profession, you would know why. But we have to, we have to ensure that visibility of these instruments are, has to be increased. People have to know that there is an alternative to go to court. And that is ADR and ODR. And it's up to us 
to really present it as, a, as an optional instrument and it must be available to everybody. We want to have a geographical coverage and sectoral coverage. Quality, and this comes also from uh, the recommendations that we have uh, adopted uh, years ago, we want to have transparency uh, of the system, effectiveness and the impartiality in order to work. And of course, in order the system to be able to work, we want that the consumers should be aware that there is a system there for them that works. That's why for us it's very important that consumers get this information uh, in their contractual um, documentation uh, or in the websites when they shop online. 43% of, Europe, 43%, sorry, of European uh, Union consumers have purchased goods or services last year over the internet. Um, and this is a slight increase, but it is quite a big increase if you compare it with the figures of 2004. So e-commerce is steadily increasing. The figure uh, of cross-border trade, as we all know and hear, hear very often, is not so much increasing. It's at 10%, but still it is also slowly but truly increasing. Interesting development is that online purchasing of online digital products, films, music, books, software, is really booming. So 57% uh, have purchased these kind of products online. The problem with small and medium-sized enterprises is that they, most of the time, they do not have a legal department who can deal with um, outstanding payments. So it's the entrepreneur himself who has to deal with it. And this leads to um, uh, very diverse uh, situations. Um, small and medium-sized enterprises depend also, especially in the B2B relations, uh, on commercial relationships, so they have to be very careful in what they are doing. So it depends also a little bit on the situation of the person who does not want to pay. If we think about B2C cases in e-commerce, we are dealing very often with cases with very low sums in disputes. So it's very uninteresting for a lawyer to specialize in this field. And if there is a dispute, to go to court in this case, and it's even much more, this applies already to a national case, but it's much more complicated uh, if you have a cross-border case. And then you might even need another lawyer if you're not related like us to a whole network of lawyers. So wouldn't I be employed in Kiel? It would be hell for me. So. Uh, being employed in Kiel and being publicly funded, it's uh, heaven.